The first two races of the NASCAR Pinty Series have featured high drama and last lap passes for the win. Now Canada's National Series comes to one of the fastest and baddest ovals in Quebec where a huge crowd is looking forward to 250 laps of racing action. Side by side down the back straightaway. One more try in turn number four. He can't make it stick. First time winner, Tracy Lapsovich. They go out to the inside. They make contact in turn nine. Oh, more contact. Clue out of shape. Clue out of contention. And look, wow. This high stakes chess game we call the 2022 championship chase comes to a tight little bow ring here in Autodrome Chaudier. Welcome to the third race of 13 to determine the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series Championship. We're in Valley Junction, Quebec, just south of Quebec City for the Quick Wick 250 presented by St. Hubert. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Adam, if you're a stock car racing fan, you like tracks like Autodrome Chaudière. This is a bad, fast little racetrack, but it has two very distinct grooves. We'll see a lot of side-by-side -side racing and top that off with this fan base. What a show we're in for. Track officials have the police outside. They've opened up not one, but two overflow parking lots. They just keep coming in. Let's take a look at the points race coming into this event, though. Kevin Lacroix has a two-point cushion over Trayton Lapsovich and Tagliani. Clute and Watson make up the top five. It's anybody's championship race at this point, Dave. We've got so many different races to go. Dirt, road course, street courses. But right now, it's about this tight oval. And it's good to see Donald Teach back with us. He's driving a brand-new race car. Matthew Kingsbury returns in the number 12. And Simon Zion Vienne brings his number 37 back to the series for another part-time venture. And let's send a track side where Dave Lloyd and the folks at Rona have today's command. One of the largest fields we've seen in recent years in the NASCAR Pinty Series comes to life here on the front straightaway. The teams have really supported the schedule this season. Rafael Lassard, our most recent winner here in 2019, he's looking forward to this race. Another young lion, Trayton Lapsovich, was fastest in practice today. And he has a win on the only other oval stop here in 2022 as the pole sitter, LP Dumoulin, will roll off first. We'll take a look at the starting lineup here as the field gets underway. Starting lineup brought to you by eBay Motors. Donald Teach qualified to the outside of row number one. Row two has Mark Antoine Cameron in the 96 and Alex Tagliani in the 18. Rounding out the top five to start this race is Rafael Lassard alongside him. The other young gun we mentioned, Trayton Lapsovich. To row four, we have Gary Clute in the 59, Andrew Ranger in the 27. Look back to row number five. That's where we find Kevin Lacroix in the 74, DJ Kennington in the 17. Row six says Brett Taylor in the three, Mark Dilley in the 64. They'll have some work to do today. Starting 13th, it'll be Matthew Kingsbury. Welcome back to the schedule. And Brandon Watson will be alongside. And row number eight, Dexter Stacy in the 92, and J.P. Bergeron in the one. Row number nine, that's where we find Larry Jackson and Simone Zion Vienne in the number 37, a local runner here at Autodrome Chaudière. Sam Fellows is in the 98, Glenn Styers in the zero, that's row 10. Row 11 has Brian Cathcart in the 71, TJ Rinomato in the two, and then rounding out the field, it'll be Wallace Stacy in the 66. Such a deep field here today, and it's going to be a 250 lap race. We'll start in sunshine, likely finish this one with the sun falling behind the trees here at Autodrome Chaudière. So that's going to affect the temperature, but we'll take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. As you said, Dave, 250 laps. There will be a break around the halfway point at lap 125. Rafael Lassard, the most recent winner. Let's go pit side with Todd Lewis. Quick note before we go green, fellas, watch for drivers that have lots of experience here handling both lanes at Chaudière. The 80 of Donald Teach has won a lot of races here. And of course, the 8 of Raphael Lassard won his first race in the series here at the Autodrome Chaudière. Home track knowledge is key. 
J.P. Bergeron, another one of those drivers who have turned a lot of laps here in a late model at Autodrome Show Harrison So keep an eye on the rookie behind the wheel of the number one. The pace car pulling off. We're getting set for 250 laps here in the Quick Wick 250 presented by St. Hubert. And we are underway at Autodrome Show Gear. That's just what L.P. Dumla wanted to hear. Clear him to the top side, he can run his line. That's his spotter, Jordan Buster, giving him the all clear, and you can see the battle is now for second between the 96, uh, Mark Antoine Cameron, and the 80 of Donald Teach. The front of the field sorting itself out, although Cameron and Teach still back and forth. That's exactly what Dumla wants to see, because Dave, one thing we're going to see in this race is a lot of lap traffic. 23 cars out here really fills up this racetrack. All single final clear by three over the 90. And you have to think, too, you have to protect your car because you make contact, you run the risk of cutting down a general tire, and with no hot pit lane here, you will lose a lot of laps. And the onboards give us a great look. There is nothing on the infield. You can't pull into pit. There's nothing there. So you have to make a hard right turn off of turn number three, and you will lose two to five laps if you have to come in and change your tire. Andrew Ranger, all sorts of loose, but he's up there in the Andrew Ranger line. <laughs> is, is actually a little bit lower compared to the Andrew Ranger line of years gone by where he gets right up to the wall. Well, you're right. He's swinging that tail end out in the early going of this one. Something interesting I noticed here as the race began, the pits are off of turn three and four. Andrew's crew chief, Gabe Lapsovich, is up in the grandstands in turn one. All by himself, got a radio on his head but he's studying something. Well, Caden Lapsovich has a win here in the past behind the wheel in the NASCAR Pinty Series, so maybe he knows something that the other spotters and crew chiefs don't know. Well, that or he's looking to learn something that the others won't know. These two started side by side, Kevin Lacroix and DJ Kennington, and they continue side by side, battling for the ninth spot. That's off to Mark Dilley there in the Leland number 64 as well, comfortably up inside the or just outside the top 10, I was going to say, but battling for that final 10th position. The hesitation getting back to the throttle for Trayton Lapsovich. He can get into the bottom, but he just has to wait a bit because if he gets on the throttle, he'll slide up into Alex Tagliani. Had to make sure he could clear the 18, then he could get back to the gas pedal. Look at inside here, look at inside. Clear bottle, clear bottle. Battle for the lead, and you can see Dumoulin up just a little bit. Cameron has come to life in that GM Pie number 96. Remember, the last time we were on the ovals at Sunset Speedway to open the 2022 season, how dominant that number 96 was. He came up just short at the end. And you can see he's racing with a confidence. He's not even using the whole racetrack. He gets a nose to the inside of Dumoulin, and he keeps his car down to the inside. He is filling the rearview mirror of LP Dumoulin right now. Dumoulin uses the number 66 of Wallace Stacy a little bit as a pick to keep the 96 in line. Now he's trying to keep that car pinned to the inside, but the bottom opens up again, and Cameron is there to fill it. GM Paye has a boatload of people here today at Chaudier, so they would love to have a good run. And look at Mark Antoine Cameron. He's making a move for the lead. 71 of Brian Cathgard is going a lap down to your race leader, but he is in the mix. And again, there is the WeatherTech number 47 using him as a pick, trying to keep the Cameron car behind. Ooh. And Cameron makes contact. Caution is out as the 71 of Cathgard goes for a spin on the back shoot. Look at the standing water on the infield. Brian Cathcart is lucky that car got locked down and stopped where it did because he's able to pull away. If he got down in the water, they'd need a tow truck to pull him out of there. You can see no real marks to the nose, but that definitely made contact. There it is. And Cameron was just waving out his window. I wonder if he was waving to Cathcart as if sorry about that. I don't think it'll make Cathcart feel much better, but it probably makes Cameron feel a bit better. We're going to be right back on the other side with more from Autodrome Chaudier. The third race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty season on TSN is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. 
by E3 spark plugs, born to burn. And by Fast Eddie Speedwear, get geared up. Dave, I really feel this is three races in one. They're gonna race to the midway break, they're gonna race till about 30 laps to go, and then the race is on to the checkered flag. The drivers really have to mind their manners and get to that last part of the race. That's the one that really counts. Well, you can see some contact already between the 80 of Donald Teach and the 96 of Cameron. Cameron spun the tires on that restart, didn't get up and going like the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin did. Cameron might have got away with one there on Donald Teach as we ride on board with the veteran from Boy Chatel. He really pinched down Teach, and if there's one thing you don't do, it's bully Donald Teach because he will punch back. Raphael Assard has entered the chat in the number eight up on the outside in the Fast Eddie Chevy Camaro, and he's working alongside Donald Teach in the eight. Now, that outside groove is yet to really come in. The bottom still seems to be the quickest, but Lassard's making a spirited effort out there. And a couple cars behind, you see Andrew Ranger, high, wide, and handsome in that 27 machine, trying to get to the outside of Trayton Lapsovich. It looks like he might be able to get his nose up there, because it seems that Trayton is, is leaning towards that inside groove. And look who is lurking at the front like a shark on a prey is the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. He smells blood in the water as he's right on the back bumper of that number 47. Chasing down Dumoulin as I consider whether sharks really do, like, is lurking what they do? They totally lurk. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. They hunt. That's, and that's what he's doing. Look at him. Uh, all right. He he, is, he's a shark. He's catching them and he's diving to the inside, taking a peek. Here he goes the door closes and that's I mean LP Dumoulin cannot see how close Cameron he knows he's close but when he drives down into the corner that's a couple of inches no driver can see behind them how close that is Cameron can but LP <laughs> Dumoulin just knows that he hasn't felt him yet and we should mention too LP Dumoulin wants to give that car a good ride here today because he signed another three-year agreement with WeatherTech stretching it and an agreement that started way back in 2012. Of course, three championships now under the belt for the Dumoulin Competition team. And he's a great ambassador for WeatherTech. And, and that's what the good folks from WeatherTech say, that it wouldn't matter if LP was a golfer or a bowler. No. It's all about LP. They, they would be behind him. Good look at Gary Clute in the 59, battling with the ESR wheels number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix moving up into that outside groove. And again, you see the momentum that you're able to carry off that high side. It doesn't look like it from our camera angles, but 18 degree banking is significant. Oh, and he's there. Inside, inside, inside. Door. Nice pass by Cameron. And gets there just in time to sweep around the 66 of Wallace Stacy. And significant to Kevin Lacroix and Gary Clute battling that close, because you remember the last time we raced, it was not a happy ending between those two, but it looks like they're gonna live and let live for now as there wasn't much contact between them. And through heavy lap traffic now goes your new race leader in Mark Antoine Cameron. LP Dumoulin slots into second, Raphael Lassard. Holding down third spot, Donald Teach and Trayton Lapsovich round out your top five. As they work around the number two of TJ Renamato, who's involved in the gumball rallies, we got caution off of turn number four, and that's Mark Dilly. And it looks like the 92 of Dexter Stacy tied up. And they're locked together at the front bumper. Dilly has lit up the rear tires on that IHL Chevy to try and get free. You can see the damage on both those race cars, but they will go laps down. And a lot of general tire rubber used up in that little burn out there. Let's see if we can get another look, and we will from high overhead. There he goes, Dexter Stacy forces it on the inside and makes contact with the Leland number 64, and around they both go. So you can see the nose all torn up on the 92 and the left front fender. It looks like the wheels pointed the right direction on the 64, so that's good news. But we'll take another quick break. We'll reset the lineup here at Autodrome Show Gear. Getting set to get back under green here in the Quick Quick 250, presented by St. Hubert on a racy little quarter-mile oval just outside of Quebec City. 
And the green flag waves, and this time it's Mark Antoine Cameron will lead them into turn number one. Yeah, curious trajectory there for LP Dumoulin, but it really got him into turn one alongside the 96. He'll stay there off of turn number four, trying to get position on the race leader. Driver to keep an eye on is the 80 of Donald Teach. Now he's had three top fives here at Autodrome Chaudière. He has finished in the top ten in all four starts he's made. There's not many drivers out here in the top 15 or so that would really surprise me with success today, Dave. And it's been that way all season long. I expect it to be that way the rest of the year. Just high quality equipment. When you've got Tagliani and Kennington and Brandon Watson battling outside of the top five. I remember how quick Tagliani was in that Viagra Chevy at Sunset Speedway in race number one. He had engine trouble, so that kept him back just a little bit, but the car was working so well. And again, we're seeing a lot of patience out of these drivers. We've already clicked off more than 50 laps in this race. There's a couple of rubber marks. Whoa, Lazard gets into three a little bit hot. The car skates up the racetrack. That allows Trayton Lapsovich to the inside. You can hear the protest from the general tires and the number eight as he went for a slide up the racetrack. Seems a little bit tidier now through three and four up on the outside. But Trayton Lapsovich going to take advantage. And it looks like Andrew Ranger is there to strike as well. So they're telling Donald Teach what's going on behind him. He's clear by two car lengths, which is good news for Donald. That means look through the windshield. Don't look behind you. Look through the windshield. Whoa, contact between Kevin Lacroix and Rafael Lazard. And there we talk about protecting your tires. So Lacroix leaning on that right side general tire. If you cut down a tire here, you will go laps down. So you really have to keep that in mind. And, and if you cut down a right front tire, you could <laughs> crash real hard. Yeah, the speeds are very, very quick here for such a short racetrack, but what a facility. Still close quarters out there. Tagliani and Kennington right behind Kevin Lacroix. And the 18 and the 17 cars are both really hugging the yellow line at the bottom of the corners. You can see Gary Clute is thinking about making it three wide because Lassard is so far up the racetrack. He's having trouble making that car stick down low. Clute keeps thinking and then he pulls back in the new tech wood number 59. Yeah it's a tempting proposition but there's no happy ending. No. <laughs> Once you get there there's nowhere to go that's going to turn out very well so Gary kind of has to run his line and avoid it just like he did right there. Avoid the contact. He's going to commit to a lane and I think that'll work out a little better from our driver from Halton Hills. See Brett Taylor in the North Country property maintenance number three was in that battle as well. This back up towards the front of the field as Andrew Ranger has now pasted himself to the back bumper of the Teach number 80. That's a brand new race car for Donald Teach. They've been out to test it just once, but they were so happy with it. They packed it up, brought it back here, and it was quick right off the trailer. It's a good time to be a chassis builder yeah. in Canada right now. McCall, Dave White. And then you've got all the teams that sort of do their own tweaking to the race cars once they get them. There's a lot of fresh equipment out on the racetrack. Boy, Ranger looking very strong as he starts flexing his muscle up inside the top three, and he's going to bring a, bring along the RTC number 20 of Drayton Lapsovich. Tells me something. If Andrew Ranger is running the bottom of the racetrack 65 laps into an oval race, he has got a really comfortable rocket. I've been watching the number 20 of Lapsovich. comes into this one second in points after not having the best results that he needed at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, his very first road course race. So needs a good finish here in the FBM Chevy to sort of maintain that status in the points. I think what's going to help Trayton is he's a very well-rounded young racer. Brandon Watson is still kind of an unknown. J.P. Bergeron, an unknown when we come to the road courses. Uh, Trayton, you still have to match up to the gold standard, which is L.P. Dumoulin and Mark Antoine yeah. Cameron and D.J. Kennington and such, but he's shown that uh, he's pretty stout. Into lap traffic, Wallace Stacy in the Bullies truck stop, number 66, holds his inside lane, lets the leaders go through on the outside. You see D.J. Kennington taking a peek on the number 18 of Alex Tagliani, and there's J.P. Bergeron, another one of the rookies that you talked about, having a great battle there with the O'Neill Electric, number 84 of Larry Jackson. 
Yeah, curious to see a couple of cars running as deep in the field as they are. Brett Taylor in the three, he's a former winner in this series. Matthew Kingsbury having a solid run, but what these drivers are doing that's great for their effort, they're staying on the lead lap. So they're not up with the lead pack, but they're quick enough to not be going a lap down fairly deep into this opening stint. There's Cathcart on the inside as he goes another lap down to the race leaders. And again, trying to use that lap traffic to your advantage is what the leaders are doing. And you can see DJ Kennington right behind this group sort of floating up and then thinking of diamonding off these corners. Yeah, as a race leader, what you really want to do is not get, whoa, a little bit of contact between Kennington and Tagliani. Kennington will drive to the inside and man, oh man. It's as well as you can execute a bump and run. Kevin Lacroix tries to get in there, but gets a little bit loose. Now it looks like Tagliani just stepped it up just a little bit and Kennington moves through. Castro Edge Dodge looks pretty good in the early going of this one. The fun thing about watching Kennington race is he will only use his bumper when it really suits his purpose. He'll give you a try, give you a try. Even when he does use the bumper, you might even question whether he did it to you or not, right? He just does it, gets by, moves on. That's Donald Teach's spotter, MP Udwa, giving him the all clear. So he tucks in behind the number 17 of DJ Kennington. The man from St. Thomas, Ontario, continues his march now up inside the top five. Yeah, T just fallen out of the top five. He'll be a little bit disappointed. But remember, we race to the halfway break, lap 125. There's going to be a comp not even a competition yellow. It's a break. Everyone goes into the pitch. You come out in the order you went in. So what you see is the drivers try to set themselves up the last 15, 20 laps before the break. You're going to see them start racing harder to pick off positions. Look at this, though. This is curious. Raphael Lassard, who was so strong in the early going of this one, seems to have dropped way off in the number eight. He's now back into that battle with the number one of J.P. Berger on the 84 of Larry Jackson. That's outside the top 10. And again, he's gone to an alternative line. Oh, trouble, trouble on the racetrack. We got one going up in smoke. That's Trayton Lapsovich in the 20. Big time smoke as he pulls up and out of the racing groove to try and keep the track from oiling down. But the FBM Chevrolet stopped on the exit of turn two. What a shakeup. Uh, he got oil pressure. No. The car, is, the car is running, but no oil pressure. That five, I'm shutting it now. That's heartbreaking news for the driver of the FBM Chevrolet. But another driver who dropped out during that green flag action is standing by with Todd. Yeah, Glenn Styers has climbed out of the car. Glenn, you're sitting here looking over what the team is doing. It looks like you found the problem. Yeah, we think it's a spark box. It's uh, It was backfiring and breaking down. It started really quick, and then when I pulled off, it just shut down. So we got it back running again and, um, and did the same thing when we got out there. So just tough break. Tough early exit for Glenn Styers. So the track cleanup continues. We'll be back with more here on TSN. And there you can see the number 20 FBM Quickwick Chevrolet on pit road. Todd is standing by with the driver. Yeah, we'll walk in and get a word with Trayton Lapsovich, who's got that dejected look on his face. Trayton, take me through what happened out there. Uh, I'm not sure. I had a I had a vibration start about 30 laps before the uh, before it went, and uh, oil pressure went down, and then finally just. Uh, Big vibration, big smoke out the back, and now we're on pit road. The guys are diagnosing it now. Sorry to see out. Well, we can tell you with the, all the oil down on the racetrack, it is a terminal problem for the driver of the 20. So this will sting in the point standings as we get back to green flag racing with Cameron and Dumoulin picking up where they left off. The only driver Lapsovich will finish ahead of today is Glenn Styers. Everybody else will be ahead of him, so 22nd spot is where he'll wind up. Tough day. Clear on the inside. Clear. So now the WeatherTech Dodge of Dumoulin is the cream in the Oreo sandwich of two Pie race cars. As Cameron, your leader, and I say that just as the 27 moves to the inside, Andrew Ranger looking to follow his teammate up into second spot now, and it looks like he'll make that happen here on the front shoot. 
Dave, in just over 10 laps, these drivers know, these spotters know, they're going to have to break, they're going to get fresh tires, they're going to restart. So every spot you can pick off now, use up all the tire you want. They only have to last you 10 more laps. But you don't want to use up too much of your race car, too, and get all that damage because there's still a second half of this race that you need that car to be intact is here comes DJ Kennington moving to the inside. As long as you don't make contact, you're fine. So the only way you'll use up your car, and we see some signs of it with Donald Teague's there, signs of contact, DJ Kennington, he's a surgeon out there with that 17 machine. It's interesting too about this racetrack is you don't want to get on the rumble strip on the inside. You see the drivers avoiding it almost like the plague. It really upsets the race car. It'll send the car straight up the racetrack if you get onto that rumble strip. Donald Teach a little squirrely off the corner. That allows Tagliani passage to the inside. Yeah, I think he got a little squirrely because of the Viagra St. Hubert number 18 of Alex Tagliani, who's getting to be in a little bit of a hurry. He wants to make his way to the front. It's time to go. Yeah. Kennington keeping the pressure on LP Dumlin, rolling the front nose of that Castrol Edge Dodge to the inside. Dumlin closes the door. We go back to the battle with Tagliani and Teach side by side, nearly a dead heat at the line. You can see that bodywork flapping on the back end of that Teach Chevrolet. Still intact, but for how much longer? Good news is aerodynamics doesn't really play a role here at a track like on a drone show here. One of my favorite things about the NASCAR Pinty Series cars, wow, J.P. Bergeron's gone a lap down there in the one machine, is there is no aero advantage or disadvantage. You can see the one of J.P. Bergeron up on the outside lane. He'll be disappointed with that. Alex LeBay here as a driver. Coach Mario Goslin helping in the pits on that team as well. So they go a lap down. And caution is out for Debris on the backstretch. And that Debris finally coming loose from the 80 of Donald Teach. It was trying to come off for about 15 laps. It finally did. And that will bring us to the break. Last week, though, the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame had their annual induction ceremony. This year, our very own Todd Lewis emceed the event. Talk about Canadian content in stock car racing. LP Dumoulin, Jim Bray, Glenn Styers, not to mention Ron St. Clair and Alex Nagy as well. A couple drivers inducted a year late thanks to COVID, but you can see cars in all their pit stalls for the break. Now let's send it down to Todd Lewis. Todd? Signal's just been given, guys, from the NASCAR officials for crews to begin work on their car. Fuel going into the number 96. Mark antoine Cameron loving how this car is handling. Just a little tight in the center of the corners. No change is coming. The 17 team, the Castrol team, very happy with their car. Start a 10th, now headed towards the front. And the 47, they too said they'll make some minor changes, but they're not sure if they're going to have enough for that 96 car tonight, guys. We'll come back to the Autodrome Chaudière when we return. Welcome back and what a storyline that has developed after this break. NASCAR has penalized both the 96 of Cameron for entering the pits too early and the 27 of Ranger for not entering the pits when the field was told to. Both cars sent to the back of the lead lap cars instead of the front row on this restart. Huge penalty. It's so hard to gain position here at Chaudière. And a new cast of characters, LP Dumlin, led a bunch of laps earlier on. And DJ Kennington, who was showing signs of hunger before the midway break. We should tell you, too, that the eight of Raphael Assart was the free pass car. So he is back on the lead lap. And with changes on that number eight machine, likely will start marching his way back up towards the front. All these teams had a little bit of time to make adjustments. You can't throw huge changes at the cars, but you can do little things to improve the handling. We'll see who made the best adjustments. The party is at the front. Still clear by half. If you are pulling away. That's Jordan Buster again, the spotter for the WeatherTech team as Jumelay tries to hold off the number 17 of DJ Kennington. Watch Kennington tuck it to the inside, trying to get that run down low, but he can't quite make it stick. You can hear from the onboard, he hesitates to get back to the throttle so he can mash the gas and try to get that run to the inside. He's just a little bit better on corner off right there, but he needs that space to open up in order to poke the nose in. Alex Tagliani keeping Cameron up high on the racetrack. I'm not sure those are bears you want to poke right now. 
That was a battle for sixth position on the racetrack. So that's where Ta Cameron is right now. And here comes the 17 to the inside. He's got a nose down to the quarter. DJ Kennington is just wearing down the 47 of LP Dumlin, running underneath. You will work those general tires a little bit harder running on the bottom of the racetrack, but a veteran like Kennington knows exactly what to do with that race car. You can see Dumoulin trying to make that outside lane work. Now he needs to get back in behind the 17 as Kennington will go through and lead a lap. And look at that stat, courtesy of Statsman Bryce. 3,500 laps left. You want to know another interesting statistic, Dave? I do. The last three races that DJ Kennington has led a lap, he won those races. Keep an eye on that 17 here today. Whoa! Teammates! Hello! Oh, no team orders here. Contact between the 96 of Cameron on the inside, the 27 of Andrew Ranger. And that could be a pivotal pass. These yeah. are two very fast race cars working their way to the front. You definitely, if you're going to the front, you want to get there first. But you don't want to wear out your stuff when you get there. Those two drivers are driving angry right now. Given penalties by NASCAR, they want to prove to NASCAR that they're two of the quickest cars on the racetrack, and they're trying to get their little contact from the APC number nine. Uh, Brandon Watson on the 80 of Teach as Teach tries to get back to the inside. A couple of veteran stock car racers. There's a big age gap between Teach and Brandon Watson, but they are two very well-traveled oval track racers. That's MP Dubois on the 80. Clear, but not for long as the 9 was right there. Now he is clear as Watson will tuck up in behind the 80 machine of Donald Teach. Cameron has pulled back alongside the 27 Rangers, so now it's a matter of which lane is going to open up ahead of them. Boy, we've got battles all over the racetrack as everybody chases the 17 of Kennington. And welcome back to Autodrome Chaudière, a track that opened back in 1992 as dirt converted to asphalt and its current form in 2005 and what a form it is putting on a show in front of a packed house this place is bursting at the seams with so many fans and how can it not look at the quebec content in this series i mean huge names indy 500 pole sitter tag liani hometown heroes this race has it all for the local race fan easy clean a new sponsor on board the eight of rafael lasardas we rode on board with him Lassard, a former winner the last time the NASCAR Pinty Series stopped here, way back in 2019. But we do have to take our hats off to promoter Mark Tanois. What a wonderful job he's done here today. You know, if there's such thing as paying your dues as a promoter, Mark Tanois has paid his dues year after year promoting races that Mother Nature just tried to wash out every time. Here's a driver we haven't seen too much of, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. He's entered the fray, now up inside the top three and putting pressure on second place as we keep an eye on those two Paye Chevrolet entries as J.P. Paye's blood pressure will start to go up the more contact those two drivers make. There's nowhere for them to go right now. Brandon Watson and Donald Teague side by side. A little bit of contact there between Teague and Watson. You can see the only difference in the Whoa. paint scheme. We got Watson around, and it looks like he went around by himself right in front of Cameron. Oh, 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 that was close. It was by himself, but I think there was some help for the nine of Brandon Watson, if I'm not mistaken. He goes around in a cloud of smoke, and the good news is he gets on the gas in time to avoid going a lap down. DJ Kennington was still checking up. Have a look on board Donald Teach. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he had moved Teach up of quite a bit the corner before to get by. He'd been hounding him for laps. Donald Teach didn't like the way the pass was executed. And things didn't work out too well for Teach. Or a flat right front tire on the 80. Look at the, the where they have to go to get to the pits. He enters a closed pit, but it's a long drive. Yeah, he'll take the penalty just to get the extra time in pit lane. And because he's only a partial driver, it is a long way to go until he gets to his pit stop. My goodness, is it ever? Laps continue to tick down under caution here in the Quick Quick 250 presented by St. Hubert. DJ Kennington remains out in front.
And welcome back to Autodrome Chaudier. The NASCAR Pinty Series has been racing here since 2014. Only six drivers have made all six starts. DJ Kennington, Alex Tagliani, LP Dumoulin, and Andrew Ranger. Ranger's only one of those six who has a win here. But look at how many of those drivers are up inside the top ten and could capitalize here today. They sure could, but it's going to be a tough move. If you want to take this bone away from DJ Kennington, you're going to have to wrestle that dog pretty hard. Well, they're fighting so hard here today. And remember, our next stop, we go to Newfoundland for the very first time for the Proline 225 presented by Quick Quick. And drivers are super excited for that one, too. Uh, everybody, have you ever been? No, I've never been, no. Uh, I've never been either. So, I mean, the drivers, the crews, the teams, the officials, everybody is excited to make this trip. And the people of Newfoundland are ready to roll out the red carpet. Feasts of cod for everybody as the NASCAR Pinty Series will come to town. I only just found out yesterday getting screeched in is actually a thing. <laughs> <laughs> thought it was a story. Just be careful with that. <laughs> Look at Ranger, though. Remember, he had that penalty at the break. And not long after, he's back up inside the top three. He's got some damage to the back end of that GM Pie Chevrolet. Now he moves to the inside of the WeatherTech Belmar, number 47 of LP Jumala. A little rub to push him up and out into the outside groove. And here comes his teammate, too. I have a feeling the damage to the back of his GM Pie Chevrolet was caused by the GM Pie Chevrolet behind him. Have a look at the damage to the nose of that one as they continue their march towards the front. Kevin Lacroix, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, his caution flag flies once again, so this is gonna halt the field and halt that march towards the front for Andrew Ranger. And it's the 12 of Matthew Kingsbury. So Kingsbury executing an old school short track racing move. He's gonna get a flat tire. He knows he's gonna go three or four laps down. So you, you pull up out of the way, they have to throw a yellow, and then you drive to the pits. NASCAR doesn't care for that move. No, absolutely not. But we will see the 12 for three more races in 2022, including two road courses. Have a look at the grandstand, so packed. Unbelievable crowd, and they are having a good time here this afternoon. Yeah, we did have a little bit of a rain shower earlier on. Did not dampen their spirits at all. They came back and filled the grandstands. We get back to Green Kennington. Once again, out in front, the Castrol Edge Dodge, the man from St. Thomas, Ontario, mixing it up with a couple of Quebec-based drivers. No kidding. <laughs> That's a Chevrolet sandwich, and he's in the middle of there. He is so good right now with that car. Hook of the... Whoa! Contact! Clear, clear. All clear. Three by one. And Cameron in the 96 cost DJ Kennington a chance at the lead there. Boy. Kennington had to leap through the Flyers because he needed a big save on that one, and he got it, hanging on to second spot. But Cameron is starting to get aggressive. He wants to go back to the front. Little contact there between Kevin Lacroix and Alex Tagliani as we ride on board with Rafael Lazard. More contact. We talked how good the 96 was here today. Remember how good he was in race number one at Sunset Speedway? Dominated that event and came up short, and he showed that he was able to dominate this one in the early going as we're under 50 laps to go now. Yeah, we, we can't overstate what a great job Robin McCluskey, that GM Pi 8 team, has done right out of the box with tremendous speed. Well, we have the opportunity. Let's tip our hat to the folks from General Tire, Robin, Craig, and crew keeping all of these drivers and crews happy with the general tires provided here this weekend they travel around with the series coast to coast and uh, lots of good hard work done from that team and uh, it, it pays off with these general tires that seem to hold up so well they really do and that same crew has been doing this from the start since yeah. 2007 they've traveled the country with the series doing a great job camera and side by side with kennington look at the space in between is kennington using that outside groove and it's working now early in the race you saw the drivers on the outside to start to slide back that groove has really come in and now it's a proper two groove racetrack as we get into the final throws of this event every time they get to the exit of the turn dj kennington is driving downhill this time cameron pushed him up the track but every other time he's putting the car downhill keeping cameron tight 
I think DJ gives a little bit of a nudge to yeah. the 96. Hey, that's not how we do it around here. No, because the exit of turn number two, look at that green monster back there. That's what you don't want to hit. You make DJ Kennington angry, you get the green monster. <laughs> you sure do. There's Dumoulin, Tagliani, and Kevin Lacroix covered by a blanket. That's a battle for fourth position. Dumoulin has it. The other two really want it. Tagliani, I think he's doing a great job having a quiet, solid day. Same with Kevin Lacroix. I mentioned earlier, three races in one. We're almost to the end of race number two. It's almost time for that sprint to the finish where you drop the gloves and you get it on. There is your race leader, though. The man from Roxton Pond, Quebec, as he continues to work through lap traffic. Going around the 66 of Wallace Stacy. But how much longer will he have that comfortable lead? It looks like the 96 is turning up the wick and coming on strong as we have a caution. And this is going to make things interesting. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix cuts a right rear tire. Well, he did it in the right spot, right in front of the pit entrance. Let's have a look here on board. Oop. Yeah, it doesn't take long before he has to grab a handful of steering wheel as that car gets uncontrollable in a hurry. Some of the GM Paillet fans, they're everywhere in those shirts cheering on their drivers. Perfect day so far. Well, perfectly <laughs> imperfect. Right now with 11 laps to go, it'll be 10 when we cross this stripe and it's an all Paillet front row. Look at the restart. Rangers going to get on the inside. Cameron will dive down low, gets in front of the 17. There you go, all clear. clear by that clear almost clear. looked like a coordinated restart. Cameron wasn't quite up to where he needed to be on Ranger, but he tucked right into that second spot. But the way these two have been racing all day long, I can assure you, I don't think that was coordinated at all. No way. You heard Andrew Ranger spotter Joe Chisholm Jr. giving him the all clear as Cameron tucked in behind. It's a great battle for third, though. Kennington hard into the door of the 47 of Dumoulin. Looks like the 17 just got in a little extra hard. The front end didn't stick. No, it sure didn't as he continues to work the bottom. Tagliani might have done Kennington a favor. He might have got Dumoulin a little wiggly there in the turn. Caution flag is out once again with seven to go. You can see a couple cars involved. The one of J.P. Bergeron and an absolutely destroyed number two of T.J. Renovato. The windshield is taken out of the Renovato number two. The one got up on his hood. Have another look towards the back of the field. Look at like loading a flatbed the one on top of the two and both cars drive away that's intense wow the good news is a tribute to the nascar safety team no drivers hurt all of them able to drive away but what an incident here is a cleanup quick to be completed three laps to go and another great restart from the Roxton Pond, Quebec native, the number 27 of Andrew Ranger. Look at the log jam behind. Kennington to the inside. This is what Ranger wants to see. White flag is up. One more flap to go. We got a car around in turn number four. Caution flag will fly. But the white was out. That we should win that. And yeah. it will be completed. Checkered flag this time around. Andrew Ranger had clearly driven past the white flag. Mike Charest throwing the green and the checkers at the same time. I'm not sure who finished second. Kennington and Cameron were side by side. In this situation, NASCAR will use all means available to determine the scored finish, Dave. And we're going to find out right after this break. In his third race for his new team, the familiar number 27 arrives in victory lane here at the Autodrome Chaudière. It is his second win at this track. First win for crew chief Caden Lapsovich and Andrew Ranger, you rode the outside when you need to and you took advantage and overcame some adversity with that penalty in the middle of the race. Unbelievable. Un grand merci à tout le monde, si. Yeah! Unbelievable. I want to thank all of my crew. Amazing job. Thank you very much. We worked so hard. It's been uh, a tough start for us this year, but uh, 
We finally win the first uh, race for us uh, with the uh, WMI and uh, GC Payet, uh, Chevrolet. Un gros merci à tout le monde. Les fans ici. Je suis vraiment content. Unbelievable race. Andrew Ranger is your winner here at the Autodrome Chaudière. For the 31st time in his NASCAR Pinty Series career, and we can tell you that Mark Antoine Cameron has been scored in second place as we till we'll take a look at the top 10 finishers. Solid day. Alex Tagliani, he fought hard for that fifth place. A solid run. Rafael Lassard overcame handling issues to finish sixth. Let's send it down to your second place finisher. Mark Antoine Cameron it is a double Paillet podium here. This is a great result for this whole team. Oh, yeah, really happy for the GM Paillet. Uh team and everything you know by racing we should we should win that race we got a penalty for uh, getting in the pit like too too early i mean that's to me it's kind of stupid but i mean the rules the rules uh, after that i start from the back uh, was tough you know to get back up front uh we need a couple more laps i mean the car was really good and andrew was getting loose but unfortunately uh, finished under under the yellow so but really happy for the team my team you know uh, Robin did a get, great job, my uh, crew chief, all the team did a great job. Uh, really happy and uh, we're looking for the, the next one. Congratulations. Thank you. Boy, he's been so close to a win twice now here in 2022. Have a look at your point standings, a tie atop the point standings with Kevin Lacroix and Alex Tagliani. The top six separated by just five points. Unbelievable. Tight racing, we're going to see it all season long. Send it down to Todd with your third place finisher. DJ Kennington, you led some laps. This is a good finish on the podium, but I know you wanted that top step. Yeah, absolutely, man. We made a little adjustment at the break, and I think I just went too far. That's on me, but I figured it would cool down and the place to tighten up, but it didn't, and I just got a little bit too free there and lost some drive off, but our Castrol Edge Dodge was amazing. Uh, boys worked hard. Thanks to Castrol and everybody for this new look. I love it. That's going to get the ball rolling for us here off to Newfoundland. Look out for the 17. DJ Kennington calling his shot. Home field advantage today for the Winter Ranger. Nobody's got home track advantage at Newfoundland. There you can see the White Motorsports crew, Caden Lapsovich, crew chief, and Jeff Wilcox celebrating in victory lane. The Quick Wick 250 has been brought to you by Belanger Fuel and Propane. By eBay Motors, the right parts and the right vehicles at the right prices. Let's ride. And by Quick Wick, the world's best fire starter. The top three celebrate on the podium, but the next time you see us, Dave, it's going to be from The Rock, Newfoundland, Eastbound Raceway Park in the Pro Line 225. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.